Hey guys, we have a special guest this episode. He is a master instructor of the Alive program, and we're going to be talking a little bit about their Alive program, as well as addressing the Uvalde shooting in Texas. So without any further instruction, let's get started. Welcome to the Impact Defense Podcast. We are dedicated to giving you the information that you need to help keep you safe. Now let's join our hosts, Brian, Jada, and Kylie. Faith. Freedom. Cars. Martial arts. Coffee. Coffee. You can find t-shirts for all this stuff and more. Where can they find that, Kylie? At faithandfreedom.clothing. Oh, by the way, if you use the coupon code Impact Defense, you will get 10% off of that. Ooh. We should better use that then. <laughs> what was that voice? I don't know. Okay. So to get away from Kylie's voices here, let's go ahead and say faithandfreedom.clothing. So we are joined today by Josh Sullivan. Um, he is an instructor for the Alive Active Shooter uh, Response Program. If you don't mind, let's get started. Just tell us a little bit about yourself. Yeah. So again, my name is Joshua Sullivan. Uh, I'm uh, the master instructor for Alive Active Shooter Survival. Um, uh, it's based out of uh, Los Angeles, just south of Los Angeles in Temecula, California. Um, and our founder, Michael Julian, uh, founded the course after a, a, a couple of the bigger active shootings, um, especially at the schools. And he just wasn't happy with what was being taught to combat it. Um, so he came up with the program. Uh, I've been an instructor for the program for a few years now with him and kind of worked up to, to his number two it's, uh, as the master instructor, which means I can teach other people how to instruct the, the program itself and certify them as instructors. Uh, my background personally is uh, over 20 years in public safety, ranging from everywhere from fire department, EMS, um, uh, including critical care, uh, as well as care under fire. So TCCC, TECC, um, and uh, a SWAT medic. Um, all the way to hazmat stuff, uh, all that kind of stuff. I've worked in corrections and, and kind of through law enforcement and then private sector for private sector has been about 10 and a half years now total, but doing contract work for the federal government uh, in the canine and uh, uh, public safety arenas. Yeah. So like, well, as we're recording this, you know, Valdi, the school shooting in Valdi, Texas just happened. Absolutely. Uh, and we had already had this planned before that happened, but I thought it was very timely that, uh, that you come on the podcast now. What does like, what does ALIVE stand for? So ALIVE is our acronym that we use. Um, well, sir, first off, you guys have all heard of run, hide, fight, right? Yeah. So run, hide, fight is what the federal government uh, teaches everybody. And there's like grants for free stuff. Um, and so the, the way that Michael created the program is, and what he explains it, which it might be a copyright infringement, I have no idea. Uh, but he says it's run, hide, fight 2.0, right? Because run, hide, fight is, is what's readily accessible to most people out there for free. Um, and, and some training is better than none, as in anything in most, most yeah. cases. Um, so a lot was based off the run, hide, fight, but how could we make it better and, and kind of update it because it wasn't updated for a long time. So live stands for uh, A is for assess, L is for leave, I is for impede, V is for violence, and E is for expose. Uh, and it's the, the way we teach quickly people how to make the, the proper decisions that is going to increase their survivability factors. Gotcha. Okay. Um, how long has Alive, the program Alive been around for? So, so Mr. Julian started the program uh, in, in the early 2000s, around 2008, 2009. Um, and even earlier than that, he was toying with the idea. Uh, so the program has been around for, for way more than 10 years. Um, and it's been taught to some pretty amazing uh, Fortune 500 companies, big box retailers, school systems, police departments around the country. When somebody is, is in an active shooter situation, what kind of, what does this training make a difference? Like how, how does this training make a difference for somebody in that active shooter situation? It, so that's a really good question. Um, and I wish more people would ask that question, believe it or not. So, uh, and again, we've already talked about run, hide, fight, run, hide, fight. Um, it's kind of like, see something, say something, right? You, right? Everybody in this world knows the saying, see something, say something, because they, they did such a good job at PR um, but what they don't say is if I asked one of you, well, who do you say something to if you see something that looks like terrorist? Other than uh, maybe 911, like people are like, I don't, I don't really know, right? Um, so what we find is that um, the difference in our training is that 
we give you pre, during, and after what to do, mm-hmm. how to do it, and how to how to be ready for it in case it happens, right? The whole run, hide, fight thing, if, if somebody comes in my office space right now, um, and, and I hear something come through the door, and I hear a big boom, and I hear my receptionist yell, well, run, hide, fight tells me to get up and to start running, right? It doesn't tell me oh, well, if I'm running out the exit, which is where I heard the noise, what do I do then, right? Oh, if I'm going to hide, unfortunately, if you look at Columbine and some of the other videos that have come out of live active shooting situations, the people that that hide under the desk or get under their tables in the, ca- uh, the library and the cafeteria, there's videos of those guys going down and executing them under the table because they're just sitting ducks. Right. Um, so, so we kind of take the, the approach that every scenario is different. And if you use all of these things, it just helps increase the survivability, no matter what the incident, it could be a knife, it could be a bomb, it could be anything. Um, if you're in an active threat, this is how you, you increase your survivability. Got you. So we teach you more of the mindset going into it and what you need to do to where you never get in that situation in the first place. I think it might be good for you to give a brief description of each of the individual aspects of a live. Um, yeah. I mean, not obviously dipping into anything you would like have someone pay for oh. training, but just a brief description. Well, you know, so money, uh, money is not a big part of this program. Yeah. Um, I mean, it obviously costs money for, for different businesses, right? So, um, you know, Michael Julian owns uh, a couple of different businesses in, in involving private investigations, security, stuff like that. I own a security and investigations and public safety training company right outside of DC here. Um, but the live program is not about money. So actually one of the things that we just did is we're doing free classes for the next month for teachers. Uh, anyone that has a school system ID, we're doing free classes because they need this, this information. Uh, I'm probably going to do a, a virtual one that we're probably going to announce um, that any, anyone across the country that's a teacher, if they send in an RSVP to it, we'll, we'll send them the link and it's going to be a huge virtual uh, live class um, because our, our course also is offered online virtually or in person. Uh, but step by step. So here, here's basically how you do it. Uh, I mean, here's the secret, right? Um, we teach people to take a second and we don't mean like take a five second. Hold on guys. I know, you know, people are shooting around. <laughs> just, yeah, hold on. Uh, but you know, you take a deep breath, right? Um, when you take that deep breath and oxygen gives oxygen to your brain and, and other body parts to where you can make a better informed decision. So assess is really just assessing, Hey, what's going on? Where is it going on at? And what, what is the next step? So you take that breath. Okay, well, it's coming from where my entrance is to my office. Okay, well, I know my exit's gone now. Um, at that point, L, leave. Can I safely leave without putting myself in danger? Okay, well, now I hear something out the back window. I, hear, I have two different sounds at the same time going on and screaming at both places. Well, now I can't know that I can leave there safely. And I, can't, I know I can't go out the door that way. So what do I do? Well, you go to impede, right? So impede, we teach lock and block and a couple different things. So if you have doors, you know, you have desks, you can start putting up stuff against and and kind of barricade yourself wherever you are, if you're safe. Um, And you just want to create time and distance from the enemy, Um, you know, make it look like you're not home. So an active shooter, and this is, this is also another thing that a lot of the courses don't do. We go into the the mindset of the killer. Um, you know, they all come in three categories. It's either anger and revenge, um, ideological, which could be terroristic, uh, religion, racism, anything like that. Um, and then the other one is mental illness. So, you know, if, if you kind of look at all that stuff and then the statistics of active shooters, since like we started keeping statistics in like 2000, um, they, they all do the same thing. They try to kill as many people in the shortest amount of time possible. Mm-hmm. So they take the, the, the path of least resistance, basically. So if you make it look like nobody's home and they open the door and they can't open the door and they see that their stuff barricaded, well, you're taking time out of their plan that they can be killing other people that aren't ready. So right. statistically, they're going to go to that next room that's not blocked and, and, and you know, somebody is not taking action against them. Um, so that's why I is really important for impede, you know, create the time and distance. Um, and then V, uh, V is violence. Um, a lot of people kind of, that's one of the biggest points of contention or, or questions people have about our course is, well, you know, why, why do you need violence if you can just hide? Well, at the end of the day, it's one of those things. I know, trust me. It, it is, <laughs> um, but yeah, we, have, we have some serious pet peeves here. <laughs> yeah, no, it's, uh, trust me. I, it's, 
I'm a professional, so I have to just talk and explain everything to them. And, uh, and you know, normally by the end of the class, I, I'll i reach out to that person directly and be like, hey, do you understand now? Um, and it's actually good that you uh, we, we brought that up, too, because one of the things that we have in class is I always have one and I ask on purpose. I'm like, hey, does anyone in this room think that they can't be violent to make it out of that situation? And there's always one. It's usually an older lady. And they're like, oh, yeah, me, I can't. I'll, I'm a sweetheart. I can't do that. And so what we do is we actually do kind of a, it's, it's a, it's a, it's a exercise that we do with them. Um, And as long as we're not going to embarrass them, like, you know, we have to really kind of check, but we'll bring them up to the front of the class and we'll say, okay, I want you to close your eyes and think about the person you love the most, whether it's your kids, your husband, your mom, your dad, I really want you to picture them in your mind, picture the last time you were with them. Right. So you really kind of get them in that situation where they're really thinking about their loved one. For me, it'd be my kids, 100%. Um, so, you know, if they're sitting there, all of a sudden I say, okay, now I want you to keep your eyes closed and I want you to imagine that I'm standing in front of you now and I just pulled out a gun and put it to your son's head. And on the count of three, I'm telling you, I'm going to shoot, I'm going to shoot him in the head. Like no questions asked. When I get to three, I'm pulling the trigger and he's dead. Do whatever you think you'd have to do once I start counting. And by the time I say one, they've already, they've already attacked me. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. Um, and so it shows, and we use that to show the entire room that we're, we're animals at the end of the day, right? We have animal instincts at the end of the day. It's, it's either fight or flight. And once you get past that flight part, everybody has it in them to go home at the end of the day. It's just a matter of finding it for them. Yeah. Um, so, so violence is if, if it comes down to it where you can't get away, you can't impede and you know, you're going to come face to face. It's how you do it. Um, and it's what you do and some, some, you know, tips of the trade, you guys doing uh, defense and combatives, you guys know people will automatically block their eyes. It's the first and most common thing that people will do is block their eyes because it's their biggest sense. Um, so, you know, we teach people, you know, we show videos in the class about how to swarm. It takes two, two young ladies um, in the video. We have two really, really small younger ladies that swarm a guy my size. And again, I'm not a small guy. Um, when he comes through the door, somebody throws a couple water bottles at his head and they tackle him and they're on the ground beating the crap out of him in their, uh, in his blue man suit. Right. So, um, you know, we teach, there's different ways to do things and there's all, there's always power in numbers. Um, so for violence, it's making that decision and doing whatever's necessary to go home at the end of the day, if, if face face to face with the person trying to take your life. And then, you know, like I'm at my office, I'm, I'm at my desk. Right. So, it's getting them in the mindset too of, Hey, what do you have around you? Do you have a pair of scissors? Do you have a, a letter opener? Right? Like this is, I don't know how these are sold on the public without, you know, having, <laughs> um, but you know, it's, it's, it's one of those easy things where people just don't think about it. Right. And so just being proactive, one of the, uh, one of the things Michael Julian taught and, and kind of coined is something called proactive reactionism, um, which I, I love saying that I don't at all, but um, proactive reactionism is just going into a process. And, you know, if I walk into the office today and there's a, a classroom going on, I'm looking at every single person in that class and making my own judgments based on what they appear, how they're acting, if they're acting normal, do I think I'm having any problems with anybody just because, I would rather do that and not have any problems than, than, okay, now we have a problem. I haven't thought about what I'm going to do. Um, so doing that in every step of life um, and everywhere you go definitely helps. And then finally expose. I, I don't personally, I think expose is the biggest thing that we teach. Uh, run, hide, fight. Did they tell you what to do afterwards? Yeah, no. Not at all, right? Yeah. Uh, so what we find, especially as somebody that's on the, the – <laughs> the the response side of it right so i'm one of the people trained to come in with weapons and, and only go after the the threat um depending on what role i'm in if somebody fit, says oh the police are here i'm safe and they jump up and start running at me i have a half a second or less to figure out if that person's a threat to me or not right and and unfortunately when it comes in in the shape of like an active shooter like uvaldi um if given that that half a second or less decision time and you don't have the threat neutralized yet, that person's a threat. So it's like, Hey, what do I do afterwards? I think it's over, but I'm not sure. Well, we teach, you know, if you're not sure, get your phone out, call 911. Hey, I'm in the school. I'm in the church. I'm in whatever it is. Um, I, I do hear an officer at the door saying, Hey, it's safe to come out. Can you confirm that that's, that's who that is? Um, they had, I don't know if you guys saw that, that high school shooting a couple months back. Um, they had a video that went viral where the the teacher and all the students are kind of in the classroom still. And you hear sheriff's office, come on, it's okay to come out. And they're like, Hey, we're not going to take that chance yet. Cause it was still right after it happened. 
and you hear, no, come on out, come on out. It's the sheriff's office. You're got, you're good. And the teacher's like, Hey, we're not comfortable. And, and they say, bro, come on, you can come out, bro. And mm-hmm. the students are like, Hey, red flag, red flag. The police wouldn't talk like that. Yeah. And so they, they blocked the door and they all, they all started jumping out the window and stuff like that. Um, and it's just, it's a good, it's a good point. Like obviously that kid uh, and the teacher hopefully had um, some sort of active survival training for a threat, but you know, just something that small is, is a red flag. And I would rather stay in the classroom, get on the phone with 911 until they clear and say, yes, it is one of our officers outside, then expose yourself too early and put yourself back into harm. Right. Yeah. Right. Um, all right. So for me, I, I'm actually certified through three different uh, organizations to teach active shooter, the USCCA, the uh, uh, Cobra Defense, and then another one. Uh, and I find that a lot of them, like, I feel like the USCCA is a little more geared toward it, like either large businesses or churches, because it's really about like, what can a big system do to, to kind of stop this? Um, whereas, uh, like another one is really kind of more geared toward just people trying to get out alive. And then another one, um, I use most of what I've gotten from that to train with security teams, because right. I've trained security teams on act, you know dealing with active shooters and different things like that, and I definitely am intrigued by like the Alive program. Where where does that kind of stack up in kind of in relation to those? It always feels like they, even though they don't advertise it that way, it feels like they they fit each one fits a certain niche of active shooters. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so like, is this more like an overall view, or like what does where does it kind of fall? So the the best way I can answer that is we are a a program designed for everybody. Um, So when we do private detective or armed security officer or unarmed security classes here at my company, one of the things I require them is part of the training is to go through the two hour course. Um, And, and granted it, it talks about different things like in the course, I'm going to say a a force on force multiplier always increases your chances, whether that's a taser, a firearm, a a, a baseball bat, because you're in, you know, your garage and there's a baseball bat, right? Some sort of force on force multiplier always uh, helps. And the other thing we tell people is if you have not been physically trained in self-defense, you need to like, you know, you look at the no gun zones and how they don't do anything for anybody. Right. And, you know, they don't protect the bad guys that are breaking the law, obviously from coming in. So, you know, we teach, you might not have to have a force, uh, force on force multiplier. So what do you do? Well, you get trained in physical self-defense. Um, you know, the, the guy, I, I don't know if you'll know this guy, I'm sure you will, that guy in Detroit or where Chicago or wherever he is, right? <laughs> yeah. Like the dude's a whack job, but he's good at marketing and he is good at certain things, right? He, he's a, uh, I don't know if you know his background or not, but I watched an a, a interview with him. Um, he's a former Green Beret. Um, so he has some, some legit training background to him and, and experience, but you know, he's going off of this TikTok and all this kind of stuff, just trying to get people in and uh, Lord help whoever um, listens to his training. But there are some good parts of it, right? You know, it, disarming. If you're if you're really close to somebody, you know, standing right next to them and they have a pistol pointing in your hand, there are ways that you can disarm that person safely uh, because reaction is always slower than action. Um, so, you know, we, we do talk about those different times uh, or types of things. And we, we also talk about, Hey, for other things that we do, it would be outside of the alive course, but we do this training as well and this training as well. So like, like you, I do training for security teams, house of worship te- uh, security teams, um, big companies, little companies, all of it as well. Um, and that's usually always a follow on because at the end of the day, a security, and, and I had a, a student ask this a couple of classes ago, um, for the active shooter response instead of survival, what if I don't have my weapon? I said, well, you're in a survival mood, right? Like anyone, whether you're the, the best trained special forces sniper, a Navy SEAL, um, a PJ, anyone at any time can base their training off this program and add to it if they want to add more. If they want to go into the response side, then you add more to what you've learned. But having a security mindset, using these steps, it's any threat. It's not just a shooting. So it kind of helps more than just, you know, the, the active shooter classes do. Um, and I've taken many, <laughs> I've sat, sat through many, many active shooter courses of different types and programs and government ones. And, um, you know, a lot of them are all just 
hey, if you run, hide or fight, right? They're all kind of based on the same thing. So uh, for the response side, you know, especially looking at Uvalde and, and kind of what's going on and how their police department has stopped cooperating with the feds on the investigation, you know, they were in there for an hour, they're saying right around an hour before they actually went in and, and took the, the shooter down with the, the tag team from U.S. Customs. Um, that is against everything I've learned on the response side. On the response side, you at least wait for one or two. And if you can't wait for one, you better be able to justify why. But then you go in and you take the threat out. Yeah. Um, you know, it's it's me versus them at that point trying to save lives. So it's it's going to be interesting kind of seeing com- what comes out of that. But um, but that's the best way I can answer your question. We teach it for everybody because even the, the response people still have to know what to do if they're not armed. Yeah, we, uh, we actually will do some uh, assessments for some businesses and stuff. Uh, a corporation had a warehouse. They brought Jada and I in to do kind of a, a bit of an active shooter assessment because just a mile down the road, they had a an active shooter happen where a guy was fired. Was he fired? Yes. He was fired. He left. He came back into the warehouse with a gun and started shooting up the place. Yes. So they had uh, someone from the local sheriff's department or local police department, whatever, come in and do the run, hide, fight, talk, uh, run, hide, fight talk. And then they had us come in. And then some of the things that we're talking about is like, you walk into this, this room, this office with nothing underneath the desk. And they were like, so, you know, much like what you talked about earlier, it said, so, uh, so we just need to like hide down here under the desk. And I'm like, no, cause that's the <laughs> right, door. No. And as soon as you come walking in the door from the warehouse there, everybody is just lined up. Right. So yeah, I, I in a barrel. Yeah, I definitely agree. There definitely needs to be something that is, you know, beyond this run. High. Right. And, and, and everything that I've done with those three organizations, they were good. Um, I'm definitely interested myself in looking well, at the one, one of the things I'm going to do is I'm going to give you guys all three access to the two hour online program so that you can actually go through and take the program at your own uh, pace. So you guys, and you know, maybe you can do a review on the next podcast or the next yeah, episode. So you guys gonna, yeah. So we're going we're um, to around. We're going to be talking about some um, active shooter stuff within the next couple of episodes anyway. Awesome. Uh, so that's one of our, just because so much is going on right now. Yeah, by the end of today, I'll, I'll have you guys a code that you guys can put into our website, and you guys will be able to get the uh, the program. We'll we'll have three of them for you. So, dude, you are awesome. Thank you. Uh, but one of the things you brought up that I wanted to cover real quick is, you know, again, I'm not saying everything I would say in the two hour or three hour course, um, but you know, we teach cover versus concealment, right? Um, you know, which is exactly what you're talking about right now. Where you know, if I get under the desk, like literally in my desk, I, I'm putting my foot through the other side right now, right? So. Um, you know, well, we teach cover like that. They were just legs. I mean, they right, were yeah. on the other side. <laughs> right. Yeah. And, and, you know, that, that's one of the biggest things because people think, oh, if I get behind a door, it's going to stop a bullet. Well, it depends on the caliber of the bullet, right? It depends on what, what is being shot from. Sometimes it depends uh, on the door. <laughs> right, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. People are getting cheap in construction these days. So, um, <laughs> but no, I mean, that's all of those things kind of go into what gets the person ready for the best case of survival. Yeah, I, I can't wait to see that. I'm very interested in that, honestly. Um, I'm curious to know, um, as another in instructor of this kind of training, how you overcome certain students that have the freeze response, who, like, completely blank. <laughs> no, I, I get it. So one of the videos that you guys are going to see in the course, um, it's it's a town hall meeting. And, and it's actually, there's a funny story that comes behind it. Um, our, our founder, Michael Julian was in some police conference and he was the keynote speaker doing the program for everybody. Um, and afterwards the guy was like, Hey, um, like that shooting you talked about in the video you showed, that was my neighbor that was in it. And he's the sheriff of the County and all this kind of stuff. And so it was a small world, but the, the, the video is amazing to show people. Right. And it shows the difference between one second and the decision you make can be life and death. Um, I will say in our, in our courses, there are a few videos that show real shootings. Um, now they don't get bloody and gory. Um, and that, you know, they don't go too, too far, but right at the beginning of one of our courses, we show a pretty, um, the New Zealand, uh, mosque shooting that happened in 2017, um, where he live streamed it the whole nine yards. Like we show a portion of that because it's important for those people, a, to get into the right frame of mind of what we're learning about. It is a serious topic. 
Um, I like making jokes, especially when I teach, because I, I, I try to keep my, my people engaged. Um, but, you know, at, at that right off the bat, I, I kind of get real to it with the program and say, look, you know, I might make jokes later and I might do this, but I want you guys to remember this because we're going to show you the same video at the end and say, what could have you have done differently or what would have you done differently? Um, but it kind of gets them captured. But one of the videos that we show, it's a grown man. He's a grown man in his probably 50s or 60s. Um, and he's on the city council or board of education, whatever they're in. I think it's a board of education. And when the guy actually pulls the trigger on the gun, he goes like this and hugs himself. And he just sits there for a good three or four seconds, just hugging himself because he's scared. Right. Um, and it's one of the best demonstrations on video that I've ever found that it shows how people freeze. Yeah. Uh, and, and I go through and say, does anybody understand how that would have had him killed if that guy was intent on killing everybody. This guy was only anger and revenge mindset. He, he only wanted to kill the board chairman because he was talking smack to him while, while he's holding a gun to it, you know, in front of him. Um, he had did like an anarchy sign on the wall. Like it, you see the video, you'll, you'll understand what I'm talking about, but it's, yeah. you know, it's, it's crazy that a grown man would go like this when everybody else jumped on the ground and everybody else was running like a grown man just hugged himself. Um, so the freeze, the freeze aspect, I mean, at the end of the day, some people aren't going to be able to overcome that. And, and, you know, what we tell them is that you need to practice every day of your life. Every time you leave your house, you need to practice proactive reactionism going into a restaurant. Okay. Where are my exits? Who's around? Um, you know, the, the Jason Bourne movie, we play a part of that, that movie when they're sitting in the, uh, the, the diner. And he's like, I know that the license plates of all six vehicles out front. I know the best place to find a gun is the blue pickup. I know the waitress is left-handed, right? That's an extreme example. Yeah. Um, but that's, that's stuff that anyone can do any day, right? You can walk in and know where your exits are. You can walk in and know if it's, if I'm going to a waffle house at two o'clock in the morning, I'm looking at who, who's appearing to be drunk or, or, you know, under the influence of something, right? Like you, you want to have every chance that you can just from that five second little assessment of if something does happen, what can I do? Um, so some people, the answer to your question, some people are just going to freeze and you can't stop that unless they get into a different mindset of what they're already in. One thing that we've talked about, and I'm sure you're, you're familiar with the Cooper's color code. Yeah. Uh, one thing that we've talked about with that is one of the best ways to keep yourself from freezing is not to sit around and, and condition white, you know, because right. it seems like every time you see a video of someone freezing in a situation uh, through some of our training and, and some of the abduction prevention stuff that we've done, we've watched a lots, lots of videos and you watch people freeze. Right. And usually it's when they're completely in la la land, not paying attention to anything that's going on around them. And then all of a sudden they get overwhelmed in that one situation. They just freeze up. Situational uh, awareness is everything. Yeah. So if yes. you're at least, you know, moderately aware you know, a lot of times people don't end up freezing. They kind of have a chance to go through the motions and deal with one, it. One of the cool things that we get to do and what we tell our instructors when we're teaching the instructor class um, is that as long as you don't change the basics of our course, if you want to add to our course, you can add to it. Um, so like I haven't added all that much. I think the course is pretty spot on, uh, but I've added a few videos. One of them being abduction, what you just said. I said, look, this is a class that teaches active threat, right? A threat doesn't have to be just a firearm. It doesn't have to be a bomb, a knife. A threat could be someone ready to uh, abduct someone, right? So there's a video and I'm, I'm sure you guys probably seen it then. Um, it's in like Honduras or Guatemala, or, you know, one of those um, Latino or Latin countries. And what happens is they're outside of a market and it's a little girl and she's buying something and there's a car sitting there. And then the guy on the right and he's on the phone pacing back and forth. And the, the younger lady that's working probably early twenties, she starts seeing this guy stand there and you can see the second she kind of looks and she kind of turns her head a little bit and she, she's starting to be situation aware and so when the little girl finally did, she started walking back up the street and the guy started to come over and the door opened from someone in the inside and they were about to push her in the car and leave. But thankfully, the, the woman being situation aware walked up next to her, grabbed her and they walked through and then the guy got in the car and left. Um, so situational awareness, that's, you know, that's one of the things I've added into uh, to my program when I'm doing live programs is, you know, that's that is the difference between life and death half the time. Yeah, right up front. Right. You can get yourself out of so many situations by just being aware of what's going on. Uh, the, the lady I'm seeing, she she lives in a, a beach town um, in Maryland. 
and you know, a couple nights ago we were walking to, to dinner and walking down the street, there was, a, I heard loud voices and I heard some, some yelling in front of us and it was on our side of the street. So without her ever realizing it, we went on the other side of the street. I was like, Hey, let's go over there and walk that way. Right. And, and just that little bit of a thing could have saved whoever, you know, if, if that sure. guy pulled out a gun and started shooting everybody up there, uh, I mean, I would have ended it of course, but um, you know, it, that decision could, saved a lot of potential trouble just yeah. by walking to the other side of the street because I was aware. So it's, it's really important. Avoidance is a form of self-defense. Absolutely. We, that's something we really try to <laughs> get across to people is like, this Absolutely. is part of being actively um, aware of your surroundings. And what did you call it? Proactive reaction. Proactive reactionism. Okay. Proactive <laughs> reactionism. That, we're, we've got to use that. I like that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 It's a part of defending yourself as if you can avoid putting yourself in dangerous situations in the first place, you are very much safer than the average person. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Stuff with stupid people in stupid places at stupid times. Yep. And that's all we live in right now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> all right. Uh, I'm going to be honest with you, dude. I could talk to you for a while, but I, I don't want to be respectful of your time. Or I do want you- to be, res- I do want <laughs> to be respectful of your time. And, uh, no respect in this environment. <laughs> but so if you could just uh, tell them how, you know, how they can, mm-hmm, those words. How they can find <laughs> you in your program. Easier, you know, yeah. why they Absolutely. would. <laughs> um, so one of the things I was also going to let you guys know, um, where are you guys actually based out of? Uh, we're in Lexington, North Carolina. Okay. So we actually, um, thank you for, for having me first off. Absolutely. Uh, but uh, my company, Discrete Security Services Investigations, um, we host uh, all the East Coast instructor classes and, and we put on active shooter survival through um, Alive courses all the time. So information there can be found www.dssimd.com. Um, and then there's a, a live active shooter tab at the top, as well as the other courses that we offer. Um, we're on Facebook, Instagram. Uh, I just got a TikTok. I have no idea how to use it yet. Um, I'm, I'm old when it comes to that. Yeah. <laughs> um, but you know, we have all those it's, uh, it's at DSSI MD, um, is, is all of our tags except for Instagram, which is DS or discrete underscore security underscore services underscore Maryland MD. I, I don't know why. Um, but yeah, you can find information there. You could always Google, um, a live active shooter instructor to go straight to our actual website. Um, you know, we have some different stories, um, on, on our website and on the actual website for a live um, we have some survival stories. Uh, we're one of the few programs that actually has a, a survival story dedicated to the live program itself. Um, Liz Moreno was at the Route 91 Music Festival uh, in Vegas, mm-hmm. uh, and credits being alive to this day because of our training. She had taken it two years prior and said that she had never even thought about it a day, a day in her life uh, again until that day when they were sitting up front heard what they thought were firecrackers. Uh, Jason Aldean ran off the stage. She turned around. There was a guy shot in the head and one in the chest behind her. Um, and she, she did what she was supposed to do based on the training and she credits being alive because of it. So, um, so that's one of our, you know, one of the things I try to explain to everybody, it, it, it does work. Yeah. Um, but yeah, as far as that, um, our instructor course, you know, if, if you guys take the course and you guys like the course and you want to be instructors, we teach an instructor course. Um, uh, the second ever East coast course and in, uh, instructor course is actually coming up in July, July 21st and 22nd. So if you guys want to be a part of that, we would love to have you. Um, and, and I think after you take this course online, you, you're going to want to be a part of this course. So, um, you know, let me know, we'll work something out with you guys. And, uh, but yeah, I, I really appreciate you guys having me. Um, what you guys are doing is very important. Just getting people safe, getting them situation aware, um, because at the end of the day, training is training and and being prepared is is life changing yes yeah agreed 100 percent. all right well i thank you very much sounds good thank you kelly 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 stop shooting lasers stop it all right listen i know it's fun i got you i understand and i know it's a whole lot cheaper now using ammo but you know if you constantly use the cert pistol, nobody else gets a chance to use the cert pistol. Put it down. Out of curiosity, why don't we just use our coupon code with cert to get more cert pistols so that we can all spend all the time we want using our cert pistols? Actually, that's not a bad idea. So if you actually go to certpistol.com, 
and use the coupon code Impact Defense, you get 10% off. Oh, okay. And I guess we don't get to use the cert pistol until we use our own coupon code. Apparently not. If you guys are enjoying this podcast, go ahead and go over to Apple Podcasts, rate us, and write us a review. We may even read your review on the podcast. All right, guys, stay safe, train hard, and we'll see you in the next one. See you. Bye. Thank you for listening to the Impact Defense Podcast. If you would like to learn more about how to keep yourself safe, check out the articles, videos, courses, and seminars at www.impactdefense.online. We also do training for security teams, churches, businesses, groups, and more. Stay sharp, stay focused, and train hard.